All right, welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to make modern websites using HTML, uh, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. In this video, I'm going to go over how to fix some common CSS grid spacing issues. So as I use grid every day, I run into these little issues um, and have to sort of, you know, figure out how to manipulate and use CSS grid in order to get the output that I want <clears throat> and this is where we're gonna start and it doesn't look like much here but what we have is sort of a, a media component uh, where we're gonna have a two column layout so the text will go on this side and the image will go on this side and uh, there's gonna uh, be a spacing issue here and so I'll just show you how to fix that spacing issue and then I have a second version where we're gonna do something similar where the text is on the left the image is on the right, and then the headline goes all the way across uh, both columns. So just to show you how to how to sort of to deal with that. So I work in the publishing industry, and this is a very common uh, sort of layout that we have to deal with all the time, uh, where we have some blurb about the book on the left or the right, and then we have the book image, right? So uh, you've seen that as you go out to larger sizes. So the first thing we're going to do is make it mobile responsive, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, because this is the source order that I've written the HTML, and this is not the order that I want to visually display. So we can see that we have our grid headline, and then we have our grid text, and then we have our grid image. And typically when you're writing your HTML, you want to make sure that you are uh, writing the source code um, for screen readers uh, to get the most important information to the user first. So think about if you were just reading this out loud going down the page, um, what is the most important part of this? Typically it's the headline. And when Google searches this page, the headline is going to be the most important part, especially if it's an H1, they're going to give it a lot of importance. And then next you want the description of the book and then next um, you know, for a screen reader, this is just going to, it's going to give you the alt text, probably. And if there's no alt text, it's going to tell you what um, the URL of the book is. At this point, this tells us nothing about the book. But we know that for sighted users or users who are looking at this, the book image is really important. So what we want to do on, uh, what we want to do on mobile devices is we want to make sure <clears throat> that we take this grid image and we put it up here but I don't want that to be the first thing uh, that hits whenever a screen reader or whenever um, a bot hits the website I want this headline to be the most important thing so uh, we can change using either Flexbox or CSS grid we can change the visual order without changing the source order, source order in the HTML previously if I wanted to have that sort of layout I would have just had to take this and put it up at the top in the HTML itself. But now we're given a little bit more uh, leeway visually in and be able to keep uh, the source order in the HTML that we really want. So I've got that set up for both of them. They're both the same style. This one just has a, a little bit longer headline uh, to do our second thing that we're trying to do. So let's first set that up. And what we want to do is we want to set our grid to uh, display grid. And so now both of these grids are set to display grid. And now we can use any of the grid properties uh, for these child elements. We have three children. We have the H1. And then we have this div uh, that holds our grid text. We could call this uh, article and be very specific. We could call this a side and be very specific. Um, <clears throat> and so we have, um, we have our three elements and you can see them here. And what we want to do is we want to take this element and we want to push it to the top. So that's the very first thing that we want to do. So I'm not going to do anything else with the grid itself, not yet. I'm going to say the grid image um, and the way that we're going to push it to the top is I'm just going to give it an explicit row to be in. Uh, so 
If you don't know much about grid, let me just show you what it looks like. So if you go into your inspector tools, we've we've set display grid on this entire element here, right? Both of our elements have display grid. So you can see that <coughs> if we don't ex <coughs> excuse me, if we don't explicitly say how many columns it is, it assumes that it's just a one column layout. So we have uh, one row at the top, and then we have our second row here, and then we have our third row here. Uh, and it just sort of lays these things out 100% width because these are all block level um, elements that we set up. H1 is a block element, this article div is a block element, and then this aside is also a block element. So they all take up 100% of the width of the outside container, which is our grid. So if we don't, you know, shrink that on the sides or give it a maximum width, then it's just going to go all the way across the page. So that's what we're seeing here now. But we have these three rows and we don't want to change the columns. We want the columns to remain uh, one column, at least on, on a mobile device, right? So this is about 350 pixels, which is somewhere in the middle or to the lower end, I guess, these days of mobile phones. And what we want to do is we want to use something to pull this up. Now we can do that in a couple of different ways. Uh, the way I'm going to choose to do it is to just say grid, uh, grid row, and then we're going to explicitly tell the image to go up to grid row number one. Now grid is really great because once you um, once you tell an element where to explicitly go, you go to this row, you go to this column, then it flows everything else uh, around it. So this is actually the first element in our source and it becomes the first element that flows down. So pushing this up sort of makes this uh, an anchored type of element so that it's always gonna be in row number one and then that means everybody else has to shift down. So these elements are acting like relatively positioned elements. These elements are acting, uh, these two images, they're acting like sort of like absolutely positioned elements, but they're still in the flow of the document. Um, but just like, um, just like if you, if you change the source order for real, it would push everything down. That's what we're doing, but we're only doing it visually, which is really nice because nothing has changed with our HTML. You can see, uh, so now we have uh, our elements exactly where we want them. There's a couple of things I want to do here. Um, for each of these grid cells, you can control the alignment inside of them. Um, so what I want to do is I want to take this uh, image because it has an explicit width on it of um, 300 pixels. So I want to just say for my grid image uh, container here, I just want to say grid, uh, it's not grid, it's uh, justify cell. So if you're familiar with, um, if you're familiar with Flexbox, uh, where you do justify content and that sort of spreads it along uh, the x-axis, um, we're doing the same thing here. So justify self, and then we just say center, and then it's going to go to the center uh, this way. We could have also said stretch and that because this has an explicit width, it doesn't do anything, um, at least not as we have it presently constituted. So we'll say center. And then uh, we also run into a problem here because this image has an explicit width, um, then it stays 300 pixels wide. But when we get to real small dev devices, like uh, if it gets down in this area, what we want is for this image to sort of shrink a little bit. So we'll say image uh, width of 100% and then that's gonna make sure that, you know, that image is always, um, when it gets below 300 pixels, that it's shrinking with the page. Um, I'm also gonna put a little bit of a padding here. <coughs> Excuse me. Put a little bit of padding just to get it away from the edges. And so now you can see both of our, um, both of our, media elements, cards, however you want to talk about them, are separated from the edge. The image is coming up to the top because our um, we're just targeting this grid image, right? We're not targeting a specific one in a specific thing, so it's doing it for both of them, which is what we want whenever we have 
a small size like this. So I think that looks pretty good. You're not going to see very much out here because it's so wide. Um, but you can see how it centered uh, the image inside of this element using justify self. Um, there's also a very, I mean, a, uh, a property it's called um, place self, which you could also use. And what place self does is it aligns it uh, horizontally, horizontally and vertically at the same time. So you can place the image uh, directly in the center. Um, I don't really need that at this point. Um, and it's not something once I go out to my styles that I really want to get uh, when I go out to the, uh, the two column layout. That's not really something I want to have to try to fix. So if you don't need it, uh, don't put it uh, because you're going to have to go out and fix everything once you sort of rearrange uh, the layout. Okay, uh, so that's where we are. We're just dealing with this first grid right now, and I'll deal with this second one later. But this, these are our common styles. Um, and so we're going to come down, and we're just going to target uh, for the rest of this first part. We're going to target uh, grid number one. So you can see that I've... I set them up to be this is grid one and grid two so they're both taking these grid styles but whatever I put in grid one is only going to affect uh, these parts okay so when we come out to let's say 700 pixels that's uh, it seems like a good size seven eight hundred pixels sometimes 600 depends on how much information you have um, that can be a real a real nice um, a real nice uh, place to put a media query because 700 is going to be it's all going to happen before you get to sort of the iPad size of 768 um, but it's also it doesn't break things down too much for a phablet uh, which is like a really small tablet or a large phone um, sort of you think like a, a Galaxy Note something like that that's somewhere in between a mobile size and a tablet size um, but you're gonna catch those at about 600 pixels or so so you're just sort of thinking about device widths and, and sizes at that point um, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to say uh, the grid one actually we can set this uh, grid style to all of them because we all we want them all to split uh, into so we're gonna say sorry we're gonna say app media and at the minimum width of 700 pixels we want to say grid template columns and I'm just gonna do a repeat function and just say two columns at one fr each and so you can see that our our width here is you know 725 so uh, it's gonna take our styles at this point our media query styles and so you can see that this is what we uh, end up with both of them so let me just sort of explain what's going on with the CSS grid here so this is our grid and you can see now we have our two columns right uh, you can see them as I go between them and what happens with CSS grid is that remember it's laying the elements out it's laying out the child elements on what we call an implicit grid which is um, it's taking all the child elements and it's filling in the grid even though you're not explicitly saying you go here or you go there uh, so <clears throat> we do have one explicit element and that's this and we have already told that image to go to row one and so it's pushing this image to column one row one because we've made this explicit right here if we take that off you can see that it changes the entire grid so now it's showing us our source order so top to bottom you know we go top to bottom left to right like this and so this is the first element second element third element and then we don't have a fourth element so our two column grid just leaves a space so this is actually what we want 
we just don't want these elements to be in this order. What we want is this one to stay here, and we want this element to move here where the image is, and then we want the image to take up over here. And so we're going to push it to this uh, cell right here. So we got a little work to do. I'm going to leave this one here because that's exactly what we want for our uh, mobile styles. So first let's explicitly say, um, let's do the easy one with our grid image. <clears throat> and then app media and at a minimum, minimum width of 700 pixels. What we want to do is we want to say grid column 2. So that pushes it into our grid column 2. It's already in grid row 1. We could make that explicit anyway. And we could say grid row 1. Don't necessarily need that. Um, but it, it might or might not help us in the, in the future. Okay, so now we have the layout that we want, essentially. We have this in the first um, in the first row, first column. We have this, first row, second column. And then we have our text here that's automatically being flowed down to here in our row two, first column. Now, I don't want to take any chances, so I'm going to explicitly say we want this here. Uh, because this is a specific layout, I'm just going to sort of put these things specifically and not leave it up to chance or to the grid to figure things out. So I'm going to say grid headline. And then again with our media query. So we only want this to happen uh, at a certain width. So we're going to say grid column 1. And we're going to say grid row 1. And so you're not going to see any changes to the layout. This is just making sure that we explicitly say where things are. Okay, and then this one is going to be for our grid text. And we want that to be column one. This is a problem here because now it's in the same row and column as our headline, not what we want. We want that to actually be down below in grid row two. Okay, and so now we have everything set. We have our headline here in column one, row one. We have our image here. And then we have our text in row two. So you can see that nothing actually changed. If I refresh, nothing will change with this layout. It's exactly what it was. Now we have this huge space here. And so this is where we start to get into fixing some of the problems uh, with CSS Grid. You think it should all just work out. But <clears throat> if you've ever worked with uh, HTML tables, um, that maybe you're too young for that, or maybe you just haven't done any tables work. Uh, that used to be the way that we laid out um, complex grid layouts a long time ago. And so anyone who's ever used HTML uh, for layout, uh, HTML tables, or if you've done email, that type of thing, then you know about column spanning and row spanning. We're going to do the same uh, types of things here. And what that's going to do is it's going to shore up this space. So what we need to do in order to get rid of space over here, because you can see that it's taking up it's being affected by how much space this image is taking up. So you can see that the image is taking up this amount of space and then it's pushing, it's forcing that whole, whole row to take up that amount of space. So whatever the largest element in that row is, it's going to take up that amount of space. So one of the things that we can do is we can actually take this element and we can span it across two uh, rows in this column and then that should shore up this space here because it'll be like this is uh, got more room to expand and it's not pushing this row so far <clears throat> so let's uh, we want to go to our grid image <coughs> Man. allergy season right so we have this media query here and then at this part we don't want it to be grid row one. We want it to be grid row one, and then we want it to start here, and we want it to end somewhere. Now, when we're looking at our grid, we can see that this is uh, track one. So for our grid rows, this is track one, this is track two, and this is track three. Um, for our columns, this is track one, track two, 
and track three. So this is uh, when you're doing the numbers, uh, the grid lines, the grid tracks, the grid uh, row start and finish. Uh, if we say if we say one slash two, that means we want it to start at grid track one, and then we want it to end at the beginning of grid track two, which gives us exactly what we're looking at right now. So this is sort of the default. It's only taking up one row. So it's starting at track one, and then it's finishing at track two. So don't think of these as rows. Think of these as the track lines. So this is sort of one of those weird uh, nomenclature naming type things that comes with CSS Grid. You have to just shift your thinking a little bit uh, because it is true that this is in Grid Column 2. That is true. But what it is is that it's really like saying uh, Grid Column 2. So you start at Grid Column Track number 2 and you finish at Grid Column Track number 3. And so when we do this, it doesn't change anything because we're starting here and we're ending here. So try not to think, if you need things to span, try not to think in absolute terms like this is grid column number two. Even though in essence, if all you want is to put it into grid column two, that's all you have to do. It's really like saying two slash three. Okay, so for our purposes, we want this to go to not two, we don't want it to stop at two, we want it to stop at grid track three. So then we just make this a three. And then now you can see even over here that everything got pulled up in real time. And we can see it uh, a little more explicitly here. So you can see that now our image is not stopping at track number two, it's going through and spanning all the way to track number three. And so we have essentially the layout that we want. We have our headline here in column one, row one. We have our image taking up all of column two. So row one and two. And then our text is in column one, row two. Okay, so this is exactly the layout that we're looking for. Now, this is one of the other issues that I run into quite frequently. And that's here. This space, this is sort of just dead space. So you can see when I roll over the element, there's uh, a margin and this is being applied automatically for an h1 element by the browser so that's going to happen <clears throat> you could take away that margin if you wanted to i'm not going to do that here um, but you would just say whatever that h1 element is margin zero and that would get rid of the orange margin uh, that it's showing now that's still not going to shore up this blue space all this space under here is just sort of dead space and it makes it look um, in design terms like these are two separate elements when the reality is this element actually goes with this text and so we want to pull up that space just a little bit and with CSS grid we can control the spacing of each of the uh, elements so we can control like how wide the columns are uh, we can control how uh, tall the rows are so what we're going to do is we're going to set this row, this first row, since this is the only element really that's going to be affected if we change the height of the row, because this one is spanning two rows, so it doesn't really matter what the height is over here. Let's just change the height of our grid, <coughs> our grid row. So we come up here to our global uh, media call. So at 700 pixels when we go to two columns we also want the grid template rows Sorry. Uh, the first one we want to set to auto. Now when you set this row to auto what it does is it only takes up as much space as the largest element and the only element that's going to take up space here is going to be our headline member because we're we're crossing over here. So if we set that to auto <clears throat> it doesn't really do anything uh, we need to because we have two rows so we need to set the other row to take up whatever space is remaining we don't necessarily have to do that uh, but I'll show you so let's just start with that 
So we have our grid template rows. We know that we have two rows. The first row is going to be auto. So whatever, um, whatever the size of the text is, that's what it's going to take up. And the second row is going to be one FR. So we're essentially just saying whatever space is left over for row two, just take up that space. Okay. And when we come back, you can see that this uh, is now only taking up our text size plus the margin and then everything else has been pulled up. Now we're left with some space, some dead space down here, uh, but you can see that now our rows are not even. So before they were a little bit more even and now they're not. So this one is taking up an automatic amount of space and then this one is taking up just the rest. <coughs> Excuse me. And now we're running into uh, these dead space issues because this has an explicit height. Um, and I think if we took the height off of that, then everything would else, everything else, this would just sort of uh, shrink up to the size of the container. And I think that's what would happen. Uh, I am pleased because this is actually a layout that uh, I use quite frequently uh, for a lot of websites that I do. And you can see that be because we have that uh, justify self, it's again being centered here. Uh, if you take that off, it will go to the, um, it should go to the beginning. Okay. So that's not what I was expecting, but because it's a hundred percent, um, it's making it all take up the space. Definitely not what we're looking for. So we want to keep that in the center. Um, if you wanted to push it over uh, to the side a little bit, then you could say justify self um, start and then it would push everything over to the left. So you can see that now inside of our grid it's being aligned to the left. right? Okay, uh, so I'm going to say center and then I also want to just sort of put a maximum width on this so that it stops sort of here and here. And this should help us also <clears throat> with our, um, so if we come down to grid one and we just say a maximum width of let's say a thousand pixels. And we just do margin auto, which is centered on the page. Um, so it should give us a nice, you see how it's, sort of centers our grid and shores up everything a little bit. There's a little bit of dead space here, but um, it's not nearly as noticeable as it was before uh, because everything was being so stretched out. And you can see that the space, the dead space on either side of the image is also uh, being taken up a little bit. So this is a pretty common uh, issue that I run into uh, as far as uh, these are concerned. And now, now if I take this off, it probably won't look so horrible because it can only get so big, um, you know, it can only get so big before it does stuff. But that's if it takes up all of the available space in here, then it sets that as its height. So this one looks fixed to me. If I take this off and stop, you know, giving epileptic fits, then you can see that we have our headline here and we have our text and then we have our image and remember this is all being um, controlled by CSS grid uh, so that when when we come out everything is good and then when we come down to our mobile sizes you can see that our mobile styles are, are taking place so that is grid number one so if you have any questions about that particular one, you can just reference it as grid number one down in the uh, comment section. All right, so the second one here, uh, we have our mobile styles exactly like we want. But when it comes out, uh, we get sort of the same thing that we wanted to do um, with the first one. But what we want to do with this grid is instead of... Um, instead of having column one, column two, what we want is for this headline to go all the way across column one and two. And then we want the top of this 
to be even with the top of this. So let's work on that part. So I'm going to come down and make a new declaration for uh, grid number two. And so anything, any styles that we mark here are going to be prefaced with grid two, so it's only affecting uh, this grid. All right, and what we want is similar uh, to what we had with this grid. Not exactly the same, but similar. So we want to set, um, we want to set our grid headline. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. And then we want to set our grid image. And I'm just going to copy and paste that as well. And we're going to change these values eventually. And then we'll just uh, take our grid text. And so we wind up with the same layout. But what we want is for this one to not be stuck in column one, we want it to expand across to column two. So remember, just like we uh, went from row one to row three, what we want to do is start at track one and we want to end at track three. So now you can see that it pushes our it pushes our uh, headline all the way over. Now we're getting overlap here uh, from the image because the image is explicitly uh, in grid column two and it's starting in row one. So what we want is for the image to be down in row two so that it's even with the top of this. So all we have to do is come through and we just want to say start at grid row uh, track two and then just go down and, uh, and take up one row of space. And really that's all that we need to do because this is already in place. It's in grid column one and in grid row two. And this one is the one that we really needed to change in this one. So uh, when we come into our, <coughs> excuse me, when we come into here, we can see that we have everything set up. So let's look at the, uh, at the row. And row one, remember, is auto. So it's only taking up as much space as this H1 element needs, uh, which is exactly what we want. If you wanted to have more space, you could give it an explicit number. You can use pixels, you can use percentages, you can use uh, viewport width or viewport height. Anything that you want necessarily, you can use M's or REMs uh, in order to create the size for, this, um, for these rows and columns. And then uh, let's just give this a maximum width, just like we did with this one. You see there's a max width of like a thousand. So since we're doing it for both of them, let's go ahead and put this on our global element. So let's just do that for both of them. Uh, so they, they both <clears throat> sort of are easier to see. Uh, so now that you can see, and it shores up our space a little bit on the sides here. Um, now we still have some space down here uh, that is um, not easy to get rid of. It's a little bit more space than up here. One way that you could get rid of that would be to um, make this column less wide, so thinner. And what that would do by squeezing in this way would be to push the text down this way. Uh, it would also give you more gap here <coughs> because of the space between your image and this column because this column is getting wider this way that gap is going to increase a little bit but it's not going to affect your headline because your headline is spacing uh, across two columns so there are a couple of different ways uh, to fix that particular problem uh, one I'll show you now is just um, it's a line height issue so you come down to your grid text and you say a line height of let's say 1.5 and you can see here that it stretches out the lines a little bit and that's going to close up uh, this space uh, just a little bit so there's less space here is about as much as up here now uh, so if you get out to that point and you need to sort of fill in some space um, you don't want the general rule for line height is you can see that it's a little bit in some ways easier to read than this big block of text uh, a little airier more airy more airy um, 
but there's more air in between the lines. So the rule of thumb is when you stop seeing the paragraph and you start seeing each individual line, you've gone too far with the line height because you don't want these to read as each individual line. You want it to read as a paragraph. So this is like 1.5. Um, if you did a spacing of one and a half on a research paper or something, that's, that's what the spacing is. So the smaller the text, the more you can get away with tight, uh, they call it letting. So the more you can get away with tight letting, the larger, um, the larger the text, <coughs> the more you can get away with sort of loose letting, uh, because it fits better together. Um, so just a little design, something or other for you. And that helps to close in this gap just a little bit so that it's not quite so noticeable. So now we've solved some of our problems here with CSS grid. We've solved the issue with the spacing between these elements here. And so now we have more of a natural spacing between this H1 and the paragraph. And remember that the H1 has a margin on the bottom and the paragraph has a margin on the top as well. So there's top and bottom margin here on each of the paragraphs. So there's uh, 1.5, I believe, or no, uh, one. So there's one rim of space on the top and bottom of each of these paragraphs. So uh, just something to remember. So if you really wanted to close up, you know, some of this space here, uh, you could close up the space on the H1 or on the top paragraph. So the first paragraph you could target with uh, nth child one or first child uh, P first child uh, pseudo element and then that would uh, you could do margin top of zero and then that would pull everything up just a little bit uh, so if you get kind of nerdy about spacing um, and that's not quite the spacing that you want there's still some some space to go here uh, in and some decisions to be made but to me uh, pulling that up so that that big huge gap is not here is a big deal so we have our uh, auto uh, sets our row to be the size of whatever the largest um, whatever the largest element the tallest element in that row is and right now the tallest element in that row explicitly is our headline because this one actually goes across right and that's why we're getting the gap here is because this is the tallest element in row two and the same thing is happening here so you can see when it goes down a line that it's only taking up the space that's necessary for the h1 so hopefully this helps you um, fix a couple of common issues i run into this whenever i do these side by side layouts all the time and um, if you're starting to get some funny um, some dead space in in your grid uh, and you don't want that dead space try can uh, try to do some column spanning or some row spanning uh, using just these numbers here. So you start at track whatever and then you end at track whatever. Another way to do this would be to say grid column and then you can say start at track one and then I want you to span two tracks. So this is this is an alternate way to do this and we should wind up with the exact same thing. So we fixed that. That's on grid two and that was for the grid headline and you can see that our headline still spans uh, the two, right? Because it's going at line one and then it's spanning one, two lines. So that's how you have to think of it. There used to be a, a property called span all. Um, you could also use a third way so if you want if you want to span all of the columns you could say one and then minus one I think that still works okay so that still works too if you know that you want to span every column or every row in the grid then you can just hit it with a one and then it ends at minus one so that would be uh, the end of that all right, I hope that this is helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments section below.
Um, thanks for watching. And um, if you want to get notifications of new videos whenever I post them, please subscribe. And you'll get notifications to your inbox and to YouTube as well whenever I post a new video. I try to do one or two a week, but uh, some weeks are slower than others, and some weeks I have a little bit more. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, if you have any suggestions for new content or things that uh, you need help with, you know, don't forget to to just leave that down in the comment section of any of the videos. I have a full uh, playlist of CSS Grid, so if you want to uh, learn a little bit more about the basics of CSS Grid or you're a little bit lost with the things that I'm talking about in this video, um, go back and, and watch those. It's three or four or five um, sort of introductory uh, getting the basics <clears throat> of CSS Grid, uh, learning how to put things into the grid, learning how the grid flows and how it works and how to set it up in your CSS. So I encourage you if you need to uh, get caught up with CSS Grid to look at that uh, playlist. All right. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.